The next data type in our series is going to be the string and strings in Elixir are represented by double quotes. So this is going to be a valid string for Elixir. We have the double quotes and inside the double quotes we have the string. Now instead of the double quotes, if you use a single quote, then that would mean a character list and a character list is different from a string inside Elixir. Now let us go and play a little bit with strings inside our IEX. Now let us go inside our IEX and let me clear up the screen. And as I just said, we can create a string by using our double quote. So let me write Octalium. So this is going to be a valid string inside Elixir. Now what happens, the IEX also provides us with a lot of convenience functions for checking different data types. And one such function for displaying the information is called as i. So let us call i and let us pass the variable of octalium and let us see what kind of output we are getting. So we can see that the term is octalium and the data type is a binary string. So what happens inside Elixir is your strings are actually saved as a collection of bytes. That's why it is saying that the data type is a binary string. Next, the size of our string is 9 bytes. And the next thing that you can see is in Elixir, a string is actually a UTF-8 encoded binary. Now, I just said that your strings are saved as a collection of bytes. And this is how it actually looks inside your memory. And as you must have noticed, it starts with double angle brackets and it also ends with the double angle brackets. Now inside of this collection, you can see that we have the individual integer representation of each of the characters inside our string. For example, the integer of 79 denotes a O, 99 denotes a C and so on. Next, we can also see a couple of protocols that are implemented for the type of a string. Now protocols are a slightly advanced topic and we will not be covering protocols in this tutorial. But for now, let us go ahead and let us see what else we can do with the strings. Now let us have a look at a little bit of magic of pattern matching with our strings. Now strings is just a collection of our bytes. And what we can do is we can use our pattern matching to extract individual code points from our string. So let me clear up the screen. And here what we can do is we can simply match for an O for Octalium. So we can say that our first character should be O and the next one we can collect in a different variable called as rest is equal to octalium. And let us see what happens next. Now let us see the contents of the variable of rest. And here we can see that the rest variable contains all of the alphabets after O. So what's happening on this line right over here? So again, the same thing goes, your left hand side should be equal to your right hand side. On the right hand side, we have a capital O and that is being pattern match right over here. And next we have a string concatenation operator. And we are saying that we want to collect all of the different code points after O inside a variable called as rest. So what happens, all of the other characters starting from C all the way to M these characters get bound to our variable of rest and that's what we are checking on line number six let us have a look at one more example suppose we again want to see the information for a new string called as abc now again the parentheses are optional so even if i take out this parentheses still the code should work and here we get the output and here we can see that the raw representation of a b and c is right over here now what's happening is 97 simply denotes the code point for our character of A. And we can check that out by using a different syntax. So we can put a question mark followed by A. So this gives us the code point representation for A. And here we can see that it's 97 and that's what we have right over here. Now suppose we want to see the code point for B. So B is going to be 98 and for C it's going to be 99 and so on. Now with all of these points in our mind, let us go back to our live book and let's start playing a little bit more with our strings. So here let us create a new section. So I want to go on blog and create a new section. And this section is all about your strings. 
so let us create the same string right over here so we can say we want to create a variable called as name and let us assign the value of octalem to this one next let us just print out the value of name and let us see what output we are getting and as expected we are getting our string back next we can also check if the given data is of the type of string or not so for that we can use an inbuilt function called as is binary so remember your strings are represented as a collection of your raw code points or a collection of your bytes so we can use this function of is binary and let us pass the variable of name and let us try to evaluate and we get the answer as true so yes this is a binary that means this is a string next let us see how we can add two strings together so let me create a new code block and let us create a new variable called as message and here we can create a message saying that hello and for adding or for concatenating we have to use this double angle brackets and then let us pass our variable of name so again just to help you remember here we have the angle brackets and if you go back to our terminal and here we can see the raw representation here also we have the angle brackets the only difference is for the representation we use the double angle brackets and for string concatenation we use the single angle bracket so let us see the output of this one so let us try to evaluate and here we have the message of hello octalium next we can use our pattern matching and let us try to extract values from the string so let's create a new code block and here again we can pattern match so we can say that the first couple of characters should be hello and after hello i want to collect the remaining in a new variable called as name and on the right hand side we have to simply pass the message so remember message is hello octalium so hello and this space right over here this is going to be pattern matching right over here and the name of octalium would be bound to our variable of name next we can also check out the contents of the variable of name so let us write it over here and let us try to evaluate and here we get the name back as octalium now there is one more way of pattern matching with our strings and this method is by pattern matching on the raw representation so let's see how we can do that so let us create a new code block now remember that the raw string representation is done by our double angle brackets and here let us try to pattern match so here we can say that we want to pattern match the first character or the first code point in a new variable and let us call that variable as head next what we want to do is we simply want to collect all of the remaining code points in a new variable and we can call that variable as rest now since we are using the raw string representation we also need to tell to elixir in which format do we want to collect all of the rest code points so here we can say that the type of rest would be binary and on the right hand side we simply have to pattern match with name and next let us see what is inside our variable of head and let us try to evaluate this cell so what's happening right now is instead of getting a string back we actually get the code point back and if we refer back to our terminal as we can see right over here so this 97 actually denotes our code point of a so that's what is happening right over here so in this case 79 actually denotes the code point for our o and we can check it out in a new block so let us create a new block right over here and here we can say that is my head is equal to the code point of o and let us try to evaluate and see what answer we are getting so yes the answer is true so if you are feeling a little bit confused so let us go back to our terminal let me clear all of these things and let us check the code point for our character of o and we get the integer representation as 79 and that's what we are checking right over here so the value inside head is 79 and that's what we are checking in this line and since the character value of o is also 79 that's why this expression is evaluating to a true so you can see that pattern matching is very powerful inside elixir and we use pattern matching practically everywhere inside elixir let us take the same example so let me copy from here and let us create a new code block 
and let me paste it right over here and here instead of using this variable of head let us pattern match on o and let us see if we can get the rest back and let us try to evaluate this expression and we get the right answer back so we get all of the characters from c to m now it's not mandatory to just pattern match on a single character we can pattern match on multiple characters so let me copy this one let us create a new code block and let me paste it over here and this time we can use two characters so let us pattern match on o and c and next let us check the contents of rest and let us try to evaluate this cell and as you can see we get the right output so you can see that pattern matching is really very powerful inside elixir next you can be also very specific while pattern matching with strings you can actually specify the number of strings that you want to collect so let me show you an example right over here let us create a new code block and let me copy this thing right over here now instead of saying o and c what we can do is we can say that we want to create a variable called as head and inside this variable we want to collect the first two binaries so here we can say that we want to collect the binary and the binary size should be for two characters next let us check the output of our head and let us try to evaluate this one and as you can see we get the characters of o and c back well this was all about strings inside elixir now don't worry if you don't get this pattern matching with binaries and all of these things i just wanted to show you all of the different possibilities by using pattern matching inside elixir